Hi, so we're back with Debbie from Shetland Real Gin, um, drinking our way through their tasting pack. As you can see, we've got some empty windows now. Um, so we've already tried the original gin, and today we're trying the Ocean Scent Gin, which my camera is not focusing on, but there we go. So Debbie, do you want to give us uh, a little bit of information about this gin? Yes, I'd love to, because this was our second gin. So as you know, our first one was the original in the Shetland Blue. And our first export was a palette of original to Germany. And that's relevant because this is how the second gin came about. So we were at a trade show and the original gin is um, very fresh, clean tasting um, with a local apple mint and it's 43%. And the Germans said to us, oh, we really like this because we've been exporting there ever since. Yes, this is really, I won't, I won't try and do an accent. We really <laughs> like this. Could you make a stronger one? And we're like, yes, we could probably do that. So we went back to the drawing board and, and we've talked about the importance of local botanicals where we can and the provenance and our brand and everything we do is about our location and the most northerly and all this sort of thing. So trying to find another local botanical with a very short growing season and being 60 degrees north and all the challenges that that gets. It, I, I think, I keep thinking, I, I claim this, I am sure it was my idea because the company's made up of two married couples and we were just sat chatting and I went, you know, we could put seaweed in. And I think we were the second gin to put seaweed uh, you see we'd add to one of the main botanicals. So we thought this would be a good idea. I know the whole UK is an island, but there is something special about where we are with being so far north and the crashing seas and the wildness and everything. So what we did is the two guys in the distillery team and actually Stuart, one of the other co-founders went up and we were trained by a representative of the University of the Highlands and Islands who came up and spent the day with us to make sure that we know where we can take the seaweed from. And it's about a mile and a half from the distillery. And what happens now is, and we have a video on our website of Mark going out with his son to collect seaweed in the summer, just with a, a carrier bag actually. And so they've been trained to take it so that they harvest it from different places and at the right time of the year, because we wouldn't really want to affect the natural environment and the growing season and what have you. So bladderwrack seaweed, a good Viking strong, you know, everything about Shetland is so tough and hardy because of the sort of the living circumstances, and it, but it's such a stunning place. But yes, bladderwrack. And we know that other gins have lovely seaweed sounding names like sea kelp and things like that. No, we're hardy water, we're Viking, bladder at. That's what we were going for. So, um, so Mark will head off and gather it and it will look like this when it's dried. So it is, it's that bobbly, it's that bobbly seaweed. It's quite difficult to see, isn't it, in the camera? Um, but yeah, so he brings that back and dries it in the distillery and then washes off the salt and then dries it again. And it's, it's absolutely incredible. It's almost easier to, to see, to just, just to get over when you're creating the gin that actually the base is the juniper and coriander and kilos, kilos and bucket loads go into the still. Our still is actually quite small. It's only a hundred liters, which in the great scheme of things, it's possibly one of the smallest actually. Um, so you put kilos of juniper and coriander in, and then we only use nine botanicals, nine botanicals in both the original and this one with the seaweed. Um, so as well as juniper coriander, we still have some citrus in it. We have some almond powder, orris root, cassia bark, touch of cinnamon, and then the local botanical. And what this does, it, it gives it an almost savouriness. It doesn't make it taste salty. We are at events at times and people are like, does it taste salty? It's like, why would we have made a gin that tastes salty? It's a, it doesn't do that. It gives it a real savouriness and it gives it a real depth of flavour. And actually, because we were asked to create a stronger one, we went right up to 49%, which is a lot stronger than most of the um, craft gins. 
And I think for that reason, when I'm standing at an event, and this is why this is so good, because we're really missing getting out and talking about our gins. Generally, and I think you're the exception here, Jenny, generally it is the guys that like the seaweed gin. <laughs> and whether it's because it's the savoriness, whether it's because it's the higher ABV, I don't know. But then there are exceptions where females like it too. Um, so this is a big, big hit. Um, it's exported to Japan, Canada, South Africa, the Cayman Islands, um, Belgium, Germany. So a real hit, and it does, it comes in. So we changed the bottle and color. So the original is the blue, the Shetland blue, and this obviously needed to be greener. And it's a shaded bottle so that um, we have them specially sprayed to exactly the color that we want. And it starts darker at the top and then it sort of eases off. Um, so we just look, this is a really, really popular gin. When we're out at events um, and people are tasting sort of two or three, uh, this quite often, this can be the top seller at an event, partly because it is different and it's very different to the original. And that's why we've got the tasting pack and that's where it really allows you to see those differences. And I and just to tell you the story of why it's called Ocean Scent, and it's Ocean Scent as in S E N T. It's not Ocean Scent as in S C E N T and the smell. Scent from the ocean. And the reason it doesn't have seaweed on the front is my son was 19 at the time when we were developing this second gin. And I said, Tom, we're going to make a gin with seaweed, a 19 year old. And he went, Yeah. All right. Right, we won't put seaweed on the front. We'll maybe put the fact that it's seaweed somewhere on the back label instead. And this is a real sort of, you know, this is typical small business, family involvement. And my husband went, we should call it Ocean Scent. I'm like, that's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. And we love our play on words. So um, that's how it came about, thanks to my son. It's not put seaweed on the front. Although, as everyone knows, seaweed is really, really good for you. So, you know, um, so, you would taste it neat again, bearing in mind that it is a strong raven V. And if you've purchased your tasting pack, you've got your notes, you've either got it, it explains exactly, as I've just told you, it's got a pitch of the seaweed. And each of these has got a cocktail that you might like to make. Um, if you decide which is your favourite and want to order a bigger bottle, we have a discount code in the tasting pack too. So as ever, you would just put a small amount in to taste it neat. Mm. When and you, actually, if you've got, go on. Because they just compared to the original. So the original, when you kind of gave it a sniff, you didn't really pick up any of the alcohol. Whereas this, you know, it's, it's like, it's not like overwhelming. It still doesn't smell like nail varnish remover, but it's definitely like, oh, yeah. It's got a little bit because more- Because of the spray. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The is, what is it, 43%, and this has gone up to 49 So it, it's quite That's a big rate, right. isn't it? It is. It is. And when we're developing the gins, um, you know, and we're trying to get that balance of botanicals, and this is where the real skill comes in, and Stuart, and actually his wife, Wilma, um, is an absolute expert now. It's getting that balance and then creating it at different ABVs and going around and saying to people, which one tastes the best? Which one do you like? And this really works at the highest strength. We, it's interesting because we have, we've done versions of this using the botanicals, but bringing out the seaweed and taking it down. And I think that probably worked. If you, if you bring out and keep the seaweed stronger, the bladder wrap stronger, you can maybe take the ABV down. But this just works really, really well um, at the 49%. And what we have at events is people will taste it and they'll actually say, you know what? That neat is actually easier and sort of really smooth compared to the 43, even though it's just, so you would, you would, Roll it around your mouth. Gives a really nice um, like tickle on the tongue, and it just it just makes me want to drink a martini. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's I think because I love dirty martinis particularly, so it's kind of got that salty, savory, yeah, kind of slightly creamy mouthfeel to it that you'd normally get by adding the olive brine. 
but if I don't have to faff around with an extra ingredient, <laughs> that for me is the winner. I am the laziest drinker in the world. If I can make something taste better with less ingredients, that is a win. Yeah, so it's like a shortcut martini, isn't it, from the yeah. days when you haven't got the time to do it. But we have had that, actually. We've taken it out to different bars, and we work with, you know, um, mixologists or cocktail, you know, makers, and, yeah, um, and almost a touch of rock salt would work really well with this because you've pulled out that that almost salty. But it is, it's that saviness. It's, I think um, it's quite hard to describe in a way, I find, because the citrus is still there as well. And, and actually for the serve, we go back to the pink grapefruit. Yeah. Um, but you could, if you wanted to keep it savory, you could go a slice of celery. We've done that, just a stick of celery could work. And samphire, um, if you can get that locally, we sometimes struggle here, but you know, north, what have you, you could, you could put that in just to bring a bit of saltiness into it. Um, or a slice of red apple would work quite well with this, we think. Nice and this is the one we've been talking about mixers and, and maybe we should make it into a the mixers. If you're doing your tasting and you want to be quite strict and you want to be able to compare, then you should really stick with the same mixer. Mm. But this one in particular works really well with elderflower tonic mm. and um, ginger ale actually can work really, really well with it or neat, or just your straightforward tonic, whichever. And it'll tell you that on the tasting cards um, in the pack. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of these tasting cards. I think it's a really good way of giving the information, but it's not overloading you. It's not lecturing about the, you know, the uh, intricacies of tasting. It's just like, this is what it is. This is how we recommend it. You can have a fancy cocktail, and then the tasting notes. I think it's really clever. Plus, I mentioned this um, earlier before we started recording. These are also numbered. So <laughs> if you're clumsy, <laughs> like I am, and you open the little pack and then instantly drop them everywhere, you still know what order they're in. It's very clever. Yeah. People like me appreciate that. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so pleased with the feedback because it was a thought because... We'd got these packs and, and we knew they were successful. And then we just thought with um, the lockdown and you know being able to share things with people and do something and, and just have something a bit more going on rather than just sitting and drinking your gin. So it's not meant to be heavy. And as we've said, you know, really, basically it just comes down to do you like it, do you not like it at the end of the day. So it's a bit more informed about that. It does allow you to maybe get a little bit more and, and it just makes you think a bit more doesn't it I could, uh, you know and then because you've got the three and they are very very different you know which one do you prefer or actually are you quite clear that the original is as close to gin as you want just really really good if somebody's looking for something a bit quirky a bit different but still tasting like a gin that's the one that you would go to so yeah, it, it does work. It does work really well. And as I mean, we we said before, if we say somebody should be the host, and actually they would keep the notes because you only get one set of notes, whereas all the other people just get their their card that they write on. You could you could do it because if you were trying to do it um, so that you pick up yourself, you're not supposed to talk through it. So you would taste it and you quietly. But it gets a bit louder as time goes on. And you quietly write down what you think. And then at the end, you would then compare. Or at the end of just each gin, you would say, well, what did you pick up? And what you do find usually is that some people, some people can be absolutely spot on. Some people can come up with something completely um, random, which is related to the nosing. And it's brought back an experience of something that happened in their childhood. But that's as equally as interesting as somebody who can pick up this one's got seaweed in without being told. And there are people like that. I, I'm not, my, I'm, I'm one of those folk that I'm, I'm getting better, as I, I've explained before. My background isn't in the drinks industry, despite being one of the co-founders, but um, you know, I'm very clear on what I do and don't like. But you know, this, just, this just helps if you want to learn a bit more. Mm, and I so yeah, we're going to make it. Have you made yours up, Jenny? I have, and it's a very little one because I got overexcited drinking it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I think um, 
I mean, the original is great, like you said, it's a it's a classic gin. But this, I think that the saltiness to it just makes me like want more. You know, it's very Moorish. And like I said, I think this will be a very good martini. Um, so I'm very excited to try that because I've been very careful with my pouring. So I've still got plenty to play with. <laughs> Excellent, because this one, all our gins have um, received a silver medal from the San Francisco World Spirits mm -hmm. Competition. But the Ocean Scent in particular, because we've submitted them into um, the International Wines and Spirits Competition, there are lots of awards out there. And as a, a small business, you have to be quite picky because otherwise actually you just spend your whole time sending your gins <laughs> off and getting awards and you're like, what are we doing here? So we're, we're really clear, we, we usually choose those two and then sometimes the people's award because we really want, you know, what matters is, you know, the person enjoying it in their home or buying it when they're out, you know, aside of experts. But the Ocean Scent, when it went to the International Wine and Spirits um, competition, it did, it got a silver outstanding for the gin and tonic category. It, it's just got, mm. it's just got something a little bit special, a little bit different, this one. Yeah, I agree. And it's in a beautiful green bottle, beautiful. And I think what's really important as well, if you are running a tasting at home, or even if you're just drinking a gin, like don't get caught up in trying to pick botanicals or trying to, you know, sound intelligent I mean five years of gym blogging and I still don't sound intelligent but I think what's like you said it's more important and more interesting if you go oh it reminds me of you know often I find um some gins taste like fresh rain you know when you've gone outside after a heavy rainstorm and I, that, I love that smell so when I taste that in a gin to me that's really exciting I can't really tell you why it tastes like that but it does yeah um, yeah I think you know, don't be scared to to say things like that or say what you think because everyone has such different tastes. You can all taste the same gin and pick up something completely different. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, because people will taste this and they'll say, oh, that reminds me of standing on a beach in such and such. And um, yeah, you do. And, and that is what we miss at the moment, not having that face-to-face -face interaction other than this, which is which is great, but being out there and people walking past and having those chats, is it, it's sort of really taken a big part of what we were about away from us at the moment. So this, this is a great substitute in being able to, to talk and share the gins with you. So. Brilliant. Well, I think we can agree, big fan of this one as well, which leaves us with, oh, if I don't drop my pack, the final gin, which, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> which I'll take out the pack and you can see properly uh, in the next video. Great. Cheers. Cheers.